Welcome back to another episode of the PMY Pro Podcast. My name is Jerome, and I'm here with Derek Ellis. Hello, everyone. And today we have a very special guest. We actually have Sean Young. He is the director of AUCO and Geospatial Industry Marketing for NVIDIA. How's it going, Sean? Good, thanks. How are you, Jerome? I'm great. I'm great. I'm excited because I know we've had this conversation of really trying to get NVIDIA to be a part of the podcast. And we're like, oh, man, we really want to make uh, a great first statement, especially going off of the the realms of our AECO previous virtual event yeah. right, recently. Um, so we're really excited to have you back on board and get you on a podcast. Great. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and again, yeah, thanks for being on a virtual event. It was great. Sean and I got to talk about, you know, Arctic solutions for ACO. So I guess kind of leading on to that, Sean, um, kind of stay on the realm of that is, you know, how do you see NVIDIA positioning, you know, its professional products to the AECO um, industry? Yeah, well, the way I think about NVIDIA for the AECO is kind of a, a trifecta. Um, so if you think about the traditional AECO ever since, uh, so our AECO, for your viewers and, uh, and listeners who may not know what that means, uh, architecture. Engineering, and in engineering, that means civil engineering, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, engineering. It's not the kind of engineering that you do when you're building machines in factories. It's the kind of engineering that is needed for a construction site. Uh, so uh, architecture, engineering, construction, and operations, which means building operations. Operations for everything from a, an office building um, and uh all the way up to an airport and you could kind of think about it and relate to it as a homeowner if you're doing like a, a smart home that's a you know simple kind of view of a building operations um with iot devices so um it, as i was saying that nvidia delivers the trifecta for this industry if you go back to the cad days cad was the first big revolution architects uh, are trained to draw straight lines in school. Along comes CAD and enables them to design buildings and blueprints much more efficiently. Along comes 3D and BIM, and now they're able to generate a lot of data that goes into construction documents much more efficiently and also collaborate uh, together. So the architects and the engineers and the construction teams can all collaborate with the building owners together around a, a BIM, which is effectively a 3D model with lots of data. And so that all runs on a computer. And the computer uh, has a display, and that display needs to take a lot of those graphics, 3D graphics. And sometimes you want to take that BIM drawing, those, the BIM model, and uh, make it look beautiful, which is a rendering, and that's more graphics. So that's sort of where NVIDIA started. Now, NVIDIA, as you probably know, started as a graphics company, graphics card, GPU company. Um, so we've been in this space a long time alongside uh, you know, the CPU and memory and storage that goes into our customers' uh, typical workstations. Um, so, but the what's interesting is uh, the GPU has evolved in terms of its utility for these customers, starting from graphics, and that's one part of the uh, trifecta, but evolving into uh, other things. So graphics used to be sort of the game level graphics, what you get off of your application uh, viewport. Um, and to get to, to, to get to do the 3D graphics in real time, which is what you need as you're designing, you need real time feedback, you wanna spin the model around, you need a good graphics card, but it used to be uh, limited to sort of a lower level of fidelity like you would get in a video game. To get the highest level of fidelity, that's called ray tracing. And that's using physics to throw photons around the scene and really get something that looks beautiful, as real as possible. Real lights and real shadows that really emulates or simulates what you would get in the real world. And that uh, has not been possible to do in real time. It, and therefore, it was an offline push a button and wait overnight for it to compute on the CPU uh, process for the longest time until NVIDIA invented RTX, which consists of some software, some SDKs that software developers can incorporate in their rendering tools, and our RTX GPU, which has RT cores, ray tracing cores built into the GPU. Now, for the first time, ray tracing could be done in real time. So graphics, ray tracing, there are other things, but I'm gonna pause 
and take them. I'll let you guys interject with some questions because I can just ramble on. Yeah, no, no, that's great. That's a yeah. really good uh, explanation of just the general of what is RT cores and how does ray tracing actually affect graphics? Because there's a lot of people who don't necessarily know the ins and outs and they're just like, okay, RT cores, ray tracing, um, but how does this really affect the graphics? What yeah. does this actually mean? So that's a great explanation. Yeah, because you can, it's, it's easy to go to a product page or a data sheet and see mm -hmm. RT cores, tensor cores, and yeah. CUDA cores, and all these cores, but like actually putting that perspective within the AECO industry, like how does that, you know, correlate to it and how does it benefit it? And I think kind of going back to what you're saying, Sean, is I, from what I hear too, is like these projects are only getting bigger and bigger and demanding more memory. So something like the 6,000 ADA generation, yeah. that has a lot of memory to help rendering and processing and photorealistic um, visuals. Yeah. So going into that, I, I guess for, I guess VR and virtual reality, how do you see that playing? Because I, I've seen stuff throughout social yeah. and, you know, just articles to where now we're in an era to where before you would break ground, you would do everything and you, you would do your walkthrough. But now with, with uh, the availability of virtual reality, mm -hmm. you know, RTX GPUs, you can also essentially walk your client through their model home before even breaking ground yeah. to make sure everything is right. And I think that leads into what you were saying too, Sean, is like simulating in terms of, okay, if my house is built here, the sun's going to rise on this side, this house can reflect off the windows, surfaces with inside as well. You can yeah. kind of, you know, manipulate and see how that's going to interact. Yeah. And even on that same note, like even using different headsets or goggles or glasses, yeah. um, they have that AR integrated into it as well. So that way you can, again, visually see what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, I, I think XR is super important to AAC. And if you think about it, you, you go back like hundreds of years. So they, they were still building buildings and, you know, drawings, sketches or blueprints. But what they also used to do is try to do perspective images um, and in what's called architectural uh, illustration. And this is you know, done by hand. And then it, that evolved to today to 3D rendering. Um, and the, the whole point is customers, uh, the people that are going to be using the building don't understand blueprints. It's hard to visualize the yeah. space, what it's going to be like to be inside. Do I really want that thing or do I want to move that wall over there? How are they supposed to know if they can't really, you know, relate to it contextually? And so to, to have a contextual relationship, you need a sense of scale. And 3D rendering really helps with that. And you yeah. have animated renderings and interactive real-time renderings, and you get a sense of scale. You can have people and cars and trees and furniture, and you start to understand the design you know, in three dimensions, the way we think. We don't think two-dimensionally, but nothing beats that level of immersion, like actually going into the building virtually inside of a VR headset. So right. VR is so important for that reason, because now you can like literally, you know, walk around the space at one-to-one -one scale, look up and look down and say, that wall's, you know, too, that corridor is too narrow. We need to move the wall. I don't like that here. There's not enough light coming in here as if you were there. The, the next evolution in this technology, which I'm really proud of to be part of as, at, at, at NVIDIA, is to enable ray tracing in VR. It's a really, really hard uh, problem because it, as you guys probably know, uh, VR, you, you need a 90 frames a second in order not to get nauseous. Normal displays are 30 frames a second, VR is 90 frames a second, and you have two eyes. So you have to generate 180 frames per second. And the VR headsets are getting to be very high resolution, up to like 4K, even 4K per eye. So that's a lot of power that you need in the GPU to be able to do all of that. Now to do that with ray tracing, which means back to what we were talking before, you're using physics to bounce photons around, it's a lot of computation, that is super complex, uh, both in terms of the software and the hardware. Keep in mind, you have to do this all in, in not just real time, at three times in real time, which is like 90 frames a second times two eyes of 4K, huge amount of compute. Now in NVIDIA, we're able to do that with Omniverse. It's kind of a first of its kind. So uh, yeah, it's game changing. To be able to have realistic lights and shadows coming in on your VR headset is, yeah. is absolutely incredible. Yeah, because that definitely helps with that immersion, as you said, too. Like, 
again, if someone's trying to walk through a house and understand, hey, this is where the light's coming from, and really say if you're going to try to sell a house to someone, and to be able to visually see that with the ray tracing and see how everything's going to reflect, that yeah. just adds that immersion factor. Yeah, I love that idea, too, where you said, Sean, is kind of taking that blueprint, because back in the day, like, okay, if you had, say, a two- or three-story home, it's like individual sheets of this is the layout and everything like that's right. where now, again, you can have like with virtual reality, a walkthrough and seeing, like you said, if something's off, like, hey, let's adjust this. Let's add a window here to get natural light here. Or, you know, you can make all those adjustments, which is great. And um, leading into that from virtual reality and just all the technology that NVIDIA is doing, I think another thing to maybe talk about is AI. Um, I know in the virtual event, you used a really good um, scenario. I think you referred it to as like a, a, a pot and you're watering a plant and your plant's like taking some of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, I'm probably botching right now. I'll let you, uh, say, but like, you're doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, That's right. it. Thank you. Thank you. That's it was, my analogy. <laughs> yeah, it was a great analogy of saying, because like that water going through is like all the AI taking care of the rest of the stuff. So how do you... Again, how, how do you see AI evolving within the AECO industry? Well, so just one example um, it, on the rendering side. Uh, so to, to now rendering is not going to go away, um, but to generate a rendering takes a certain amount of care, expertise, and setup. Um, you have to assign materials. You have to de determine lighting, um, and uh, and so there's a, a workflow to do that. But with if you, if if you've tried uh, stable diffusion or any uh, uh, of those type of you know chappy GPT solutions for images, you can type in words and it generates an image. What you can also do is uh, the AI generates an image. What you can also do is use a reference image. So that reference image could be a sketch, sketch a house, and then upload it into the you know chat GPT type of interface and add some words like take this house and put it on a mountain and uh, put brick materials on it um, and uh, and you know show me what it's going to look like and so it's that and you get a nice looking almost like pho photorealistic uh, you know rendering it's not a rendering it's an AI generated uh, image generative AI um, now the same can let's take that one step further and there's applications like this from software vendors on the market where you can have like a wireframe 3d model on your screen in one viewport like for example from revit and on the other screen it's referencing that wireframe model and showing you what that would look like on a mountaintop with brick material brick materials and windows and doors and without you having to actually do all the work. Now, the quality, everything, it's not quite the same as you know professionally done uh, 3D rendering. But if you think about like the conceptual design process and being able to sketch something quickly and then be able to see it without having to do all the work, it's pretty incredible. That's just one example of how AI is going to um, influence uh, the way we work. And, um, but but it, I think that's just like the tip of the iceberg, uh, because pretty pictures, we have much more fundamental problems to solve in AECO on the construction site and efficiencies in the design process, leveraging existing uh, data to avoid mistakes uh, and to accelerate the process, improve collaboration, reduce costs, uh, improve sustainability, and on the construction site, improve safety. AI is going to you're going to see hundreds, if not thousands of solutions in the next couple of years that are that are going to use AI to solve these problems that have been longstanding and uh, really too expensive uh, and uh, time consuming from a human point of view to solve without AI. Now that AI is available and the computing, the biggest barrier for AI has been the availability of the enough compute capability to do this all in real time, but it's thanks to NVIDIA solutions, it's here now. Right. Yeah, it kind of seems to me like efficiency is the name of the game in the sense when it comes to AI, um, whether you're using it all these different types of markets, especially focusing in AECO yeah. in where it's like, okay, we just need to cut down the time to be able to do this correctly, but as efficient as possible. That just seems like that's really the motive um, when it comes to AI and increasing all of that. Yeah, and going back to stable diffusion too, like that that's something we're actually playing in the back here a little bit because mm -hmm. it's, Again, like the chat GPT, but now you can say like, again, give me a house with brick mm -hmm. exterior and just 
it spits something out, but also too, to keep in mind, like that's going to take a lot of, um, you know, compute power and memory. I think just, we, we told it to make a generate a, a, a picture of a, a dog in the sky or whatever. Yeah. And it was using a quite a bit of memory. So I think again, mm -hmm. even going to just memory and just compute power, mm -hmm. you know, the ADA generation, um, is, is great within, you know, the AACO industry as well, which we hit on in the virtual event a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great point, Derek. And, th and this is why, as I was referencing at the start of the call, the GPU is evolving. So where it used to be, okay, you have to create a balanced workstation, you, you need, you know, your, you, you've got your memory, your storage, your CPU, your GPU, your GPUs for graphics. And so you take that measure into account. But now it's different because the GPU is no longer just for graphics. The GPU is for is still doing all that graphics work. But on top of that, it's also doing real-time ray tracing, which is a compute function. Um, it, using those RT cores to compute the physics, real-time ray tracing is also using AI. Um, it, it's using something that NVIDIA invented called deep learning super sampling. And uh, that basically predicts what the pixels should be so they don't all have to be computed, therefore accelerating that frame rate. And that's what enables us to get up to that 90 frames per second for the two times 90 frames for the VR. So it's, and we have special cores on our RTX GPUs called tensor cores. So we have RT ray tracing cores, and we have tensor cores for the AI inference. And now there's all these other applications that are going to be using those tensor cores uh, for all these other AI workloads. So you, when, when doing the workstation configuration, you really need to take into account that you're going to be doing graphics, you're going to be doing ray tracing, and you're going to be doing AI inference on the tensor cores, and you're going to be doing more. Because there's this other thing that NVIDIA brings to the table, which is called CUDA. And CUDA is an SDK, a developer tool, that our software partners, Autodesk, S3, Benly, Hexagon, Trimble, et cetera, et cetera, Nemischek, et cetera, et cetera, uses as a programming language to do what's called parallel computing, which enables them to do lots of processing of different tasks in parallel on the GPU. So you're going to see more and more of functionality inside the applications you use every day doing non-graphical computing uh, directly on the GPU. All right, Sean, that was really in good information. Um, is there any other thoughts that you have on ACO or kind of just want to touch on? Yeah, well, I think that the the, uh, the moral of the story is um, the GPU is going to be an indispensable tool in your workstation, much more so than ever before uh, for, uh, for AI, for computation, uh, for graphics, and for real-time ray tracing. Uh, so take all of those things into account when you're deciding on what size of GPU you need uh, for you or for your internal users. Uh, we're happy at PMY and NVIDIA to help you and answer your questions. Uh, for uh, all your multitude of use cases, including reality capture, uh, BIM, uh, rendering and ray tracing, design reviews with uh, XR, uh, AR, and um, of course, everything to do with AI. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, Sean, and thank you so much. Thank we you. appreciate you being on our virtual event. We appreciate you joining us on the PMI Pro podcast. Uh, thank you for your time and all this great information. And who knows, maybe we can uh, cross paths again sometime in the future again. We'd love to have you on again. Yeah, this was a really great episode. Yeah. So Jerome, real quick, uh, go ahead. Tell everybody, where can they where can they find us? Yeah, so you can find us at PMI Pro at all of our social media accounts, or you can listen to us on your favorite podcast platform. Great. Well, hey, Sean, thank you again so much for being on here. And uh, we look forward to have you on a future episode. Thanks, guys. Uh, take care. Take care. Yeah.